All drama has to deal with what is probable, not what's possible. Now, not only would she not want the 68-year-old man missing fingers to be her lover, what about a black man? Uh, no. Why? Because <laughs> she wants George to think it's his kid. Yes. So, she would have to take other things into consideration of whether he's Hispanic or black. Mm -hmm. If the guy was a ruddy face Irishman and her husband is, you know, darker, no. You're not going to get red hair from blonde whatever hers is, and right. The, right. the husband's dark. Sure. So that means once she has decided, in the first place, this is something like, even like killing oneself. It's not something you say, you know what, I'm going to kill myself. Where's the hatchet? You think about it. You think yeah. About it. Yeah. So yeah, she awesome. has been, for a certain amount of time, probably two, two and a half years, not happy that she doesn't have a baby to take up her time. And I don't mean that that's the only reason she wouldn't be unhappy about not having a baby. But as time goes by, it gets more egregious that she doesn't have a baby. So that it's the time that I'm talking about taking up is the time of its egregiousness. Not just if I had a baby, I would know. I have the diaper room, so I would know what to do with myself. Mm -hmm. She wants a baby. Mm -hmm. She's a woman who wants a baby. She's with a husband who wants to buy nice things and go on vacations and not have a baby. Mm -hmm. In a certain way, except for having my bloodline go forward and so forth, it's not a personal fulfillment for a man to have a child necessarily. But for many women, it is a personal fulfillment. That's what women do. Mm -hmm. I have children. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't have a career. Mm -hmm. So what else is she going to do? Mm -hmm. Her fulfillment is not to be the antiques store shopper the rest of her life. So it's a personal fulfillment to have the baby. So she decides for a long time she would just be anxious and upset about it, the fact that the husband won't relent. And that kind of discomfort goes on for a certain amount of time. And what happens finally, somebody says, I have to end this discomfort. The purpose of all anxiety reactions is the relief of the anxiety. In other words, the behavior. Now, she feels her life going by. She feels she has no purpose on earth. She feels that except for fiddling around in the house, I got nothing to do with myself. Mm -hmm. All of that makes somebody feel not important, not a real human being, not somebody who's worth living on earth in a sense, because you don't have anything to do with yourself. Not just simple boredom. That would last, you know, two weeks, you're by yourself, don't have anything to do, you're bored. No. Several years, then it, it's an anxiety response that she has to stop mm -hmm. one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So that pushes her to something which is pretty beyond the norm, which is if the husband won't do it, somebody else will. So when she, after time, decides to do that, she doesn't know to go to the antique dealer first, right? but she starts noticing things. She starts looking at people differently. She starts thinking who would be a good candidate. And for the reason we talked about before, she might run through her husband's friends or his brother or his family, all the connections which would cause more trouble than they would solve. And so at some point, she comes to the recognition, this really needs to be somebody I don't know. Mm -hmm. But if it's somebody I don't know, what are we getting into? Right. How do I seal the deal? Right. Without having it be a guy with who's 68 and having only three fingers mm -hmm. or having it be a black guy with herpes or whatever else. And also, in addition, also, it's got to look like... It's got to look like his, George's, my, George's, George's caution has failed, too. In other words... Yes. They, well, uh, those, are one of, those are one of the things you never really know about. Yeah. Because obviously he's being cautious. They're using birth control. But birth control is not 100%. No kind of birth control is 100%. Yeah. Even condoms can have a leak. Right. Generally, they don't. They've gone for, you know... Testing. 100 years without really being a, something that was a faulty product. But um, it's not impossible that something might tear a little bit or something. 
Well, yeah, condoms have been yeah, known to break. Okay. Now, psychologists say that in most people, that period of romance and almost the honeymoon kind of feeling, mm-hmm. the honeymoon kind of feeling refers to this. We've already slept together, but we love sleeping together so much that when I'm at work, I'm thinking about going home and sleeping with my wife. Well, that whole period, psychologically, in relationships, whether people married or not, lasts about three years. That passion can last up to about three years. Then it dissipates. That's why people's behavior in relation to each other changes. It's not that they now don't like the other person. It's that the psychological mechanism is not set up to sustain passion forever. And the reason that psychologists say this is probably true is that it's evolutionarily true. And that is by that three-year period of time, throughout caveman to now, most people who have made have had children. And it is to the benefit of the children that the passion between the two people sexually dissipates. Because now the mother is not going to be crazed about sleeping with the husband. She's going to be crazed about caring for the baby. Mm-hmm. And what about the husband? <laughs> the husband usually starts looking at the secretary or somebody else <laughs> because the three years of passion that he had with his wife has dissipated. Is the evolutionary benefit also for the man to go out and sow his seed somewhere else so that, uh, you know... Well, the evolutionary push is for man to sow his seed all over the place. So, they're together five years. So, say he was very cautious for the first three years, but still passionate. Mm -hmm. But then in the fourth year, he's only cautious. Mm -hmm. He's going to feel a void. Yeah. Now, she's going to want that child all the more. As she would. Yeah. Um, on those tapes that I gave you, uh, the myth, yeah, yeah, power myth. He says people who think marriage is in a lifetime affair are out of their minds. <laughs> marriage is not about an affair. Marriage is not about sexuality. There's an early part, he says, which is the producing of offspring, but the rest of that marriage is supposed to be the relationship of those two people to each other not the relationship to children or anything else, the sharing of life together, not the sexuality together. And it turns out that what he says about that, methodologically speaking, is also true, psychologically speaking, and the thing that I said before, by five years, you know. And men love variety. How could you be married to Demi Moore and want to sleep with somebody else? If it was just, if she's hot and good looking, I mean, when she's 50, I mean, when she was 30, when she married Bruce Willis. Mm-hmm. Why Why would he want somebody else? It was just for somebody hot and sexy and also interesting and intelligent and so forth. We would see interacting that she's intelligent because she uses her mind to interact. How could he want somebody else? So this is her circumstance. Passion has waned. And now he's only careful. So she has sex with him, but nothing's going to come from it. Meaning baby-wise? To fulfill her need, I'm talking about. It's not even going to be passionate anymore. So, when somebody is withholding something from you, who's supposed to care about you, and know you really want, you get resentful. There's a couple I know where the wife wants a diamond engagement ring. Now, 25 years after they've been married, the husband wasn't able to afford one when they got married. But she wants one, and she's resentful that he still doesn't want to give her one. He doesn't want to spend the money on it. Can he afford it now? Yeah. He's not rich, but he could afford it. But she's resentful of that because she says in her mind, this person loves me. We've had children together. We've had a life together. But he still doesn't want to give me this. What the? Avis would be resentful. And so therefore, rather than just tricking the husband, what are the last lines of the play say? Both of them are talking about we can really fuck old George over good. So she picks someone else as part of the payback. And he won't be paid back to his knowledge because she ain't going to tell him, but she will pay him back to her knowledge, which will alleviate some of her resentment and anxiety about the event. Now... The event of the having the affair? No, the event of not having had children for all this period of time. Mm-hmm. Now, if a woman is not on birth control... And you sleep with her. Will she get pregnant? Not necessarily. No guarantee. How come? 
because sometimes the sperm doesn't make it to the egg. That's true. Now, what's this deal about the egg? What's the deal about the egg? Yeah, tell me the story of the egg. <laughs> How does the egg thing work? Well, goes from the fallopian tube to the uterus. Has to find a spot. Where does it come from? The ovary. Right. Yeah. Now, the ovary is just spitting out eggs every two seconds? No. How often? Mm, can't recall, but it's on a cycle. You know, you've heard of, I'm sure, being of age, the menstrual cycle. Sure. What does that mean? That happens on what? Once a month, right? Period table. So one, once every 30 days, roughly? 28. Once every 28 days. By the way, do you know what causes a woman's cycle to be every 28 days? Mm -mm. The moon. Oh, yeah? The gravitational pull of the moon. The moon works in a 28-day cycle, and that affects the woman's body, and it causes it a woman's cycle to be every 28 days. Interesting, right? That is interesting. If we didn't have a moon, what would happen? Women would have a different cycle period. It would have been set by something else. Right. Of course, the, the egg could only survive for so long. It has to be flushed out and replaced right. by a new egg. Right. So. Hmm. Now, a woman has a period. Her period is over on Sunday. Can she get pregnant on Monday? I will say no, because you need time for the egg to yeah. hook back the, into the, the wall. The Catholic Church did support one Type method of birth. of birth control. Right. And that was the uh, rhythm method. Rhythm. And that meant a woman is supposed to keep track of her the cycle. days when she had her period. Yeah. When she's ovulating. Right. And to have sex in between the time she had her period and when she's ovulating. Right. So, so how what many, does all this have to do with? At, well, right. Free time. Right. Except free time is not always free because a woman's not, body is not always exact. Yeah, right, right. Sometimes they miss periods. That's why the rhythm Sometimes they is. produce two eggs instead of one. Other things. Yeah, happen. can happen, yeah. Now, how does Avis know that I want a child? I've gone around to the grocery store, and I've gone through all my husband's friends, and I've gone through other people who live in the building, and I've gone by the places where I go for lunch and look around and see who else has lunch there, and I've gone around... And I thought, well, God knows not the pizza boy. They, they only do in porn movies. And I finally, one day, seen somebody when I was at the antique store who might just work. Now, a guy who's Rex, who's going to be Rex at the antique store, he wouldn't come to his boss and say, do you think this rosette should be thrown? He'd say, look, if you're going to do this chair right, you got to put the rosette on it. I mean, we don't have to do it. Believe me, for me, it'll be easier. I won't have to do all the work, but... You know, if you know anything about this design, you got to put the rosette on. And you want it on it, don't you? You'd be Rex there, too, to the degree that he can get away with it without getting fired. Right. So she would have seen him around, and she would have seen his personality. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, if they came to your house for something that was a pretext for you, but they didn't realize it, mm -hmm. and you were there and you started taking off their clothes, they'd think, well, what the is this woman doing? Mm-hmm. They wouldn't just jump in bed with her because she said so. Mm -hmm. Maybe her husband's in the closet and they Set want. Up. Yeah. You don't know what it is. So that means you've got to pick somebody like Rex. Who's somebody who's not going to give you a hard time. Right. So, in other words, she has to pick somebody who's likely to do it. Mm hmm. So, Rex. Mm hmm. She must have seen Rex behaving like he thought it was Rex. Mm hmm. Also, he is in her age range. So look what she's got to do to find the right guy. And isn't it funny how you know things change? Like you have the idea to do something, but when it actually comes time that's to do exactly it. That's exactly what I'm talking when about. When it actually comes time to do it. Yeah. So that means she has had to watch a number of things to get this to happen today. She has to watch her ovulation pattern. She has to watch who's going to do something, who will work it out, who would be good for my husband to believe it's his kid. She has to work out who's the guy in this circumstance who's likely to do it. Then she's got to have a real excuse once he gets there. If it's the guy she met through a real estate company, she's got to say, well, we're really thinking of selling this co-op and can you evaluate it for me and see what we should get. Yeah, she needed to have the hook, which is the yes. uh, refinished right. two pieces of furniture. Right. So all of that stuff has to, has to be prepared. Mm -hmm. So this is a whole odyssey she's on. That makes it much different play than two people who, it's lunchtime, Let's, you know, we got a little time here. Let's. 
That's a, that plays nothing. There's no play in that. And it's people doing things that people wouldn't do. People don't do that. Again, like I say, most men put into a situation where somebody all of a sudden, they come into a door and a guy, a woman they don't know says, well, she's me, essentially by her behavior. Well, they may end up doing it, but they got to be convinced. It's not the usual circumstance to have that happen. So therefore, you say, what the fuck's going on? And that has to be satisfied to your curiosity before you're then ready to go ahead. So it's a whole different play when you're dealing with all the things that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, all of these things I'm talking about rest on what premise? It rests on how do real people behave? How do real people behave? It does not rest on what do you think this character is doing this for? Because when people deal with plays and they think of it in terms of character, they're not thinking in terms of real people. They're thinking of terms of a singular cartoon figure mm -hmm. on a page. A singular personality, a singular character. Yeah. The character isn't a real person. So if the character runs into the room and shoots somebody, they say, well, the character shot him. Well, who does that? Mm -hmm. And under what circumstances? Mm -hmm. Who, a woman of this level, who has a lot in life, why would she do this? Well, the guy who's obviously not of her station, mm -hmm. why would she do it? Because he's so dynamic? I mean, that that builds into the male fantasy. Porn is, is a male-consumed product. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons for that is because it deals with male fantasy, which is I'll come in and I'll be so hot it'll make her pants fall off. But nobody comes into any room to a woman who's not ready for her pants to fall off and makes her pants fall off just because he's hot. This play is played like a fantasy thing. Oh, the two people are hot and they're hot in the pants. You've seen productions, you mean, where yeah. it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or I've seen scenes, actually. Yeah, yeah. More. I think I've seen maybe two productions. Where it's played that, oh, they're just so hot for each other. Yeah. It's, it's nothing all about but, just a roll in a hay. Right. And, and the, what they're saying when they say, we will we'll really fuck Georgia, won't we? Just means, we'll have fucked each other and Georgia not. No. Nah, 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 nah. That's so demeaning for what the play's about. The play's a real drama. The play's about real human behavior. It's about the woman needing what she needs to be fulfilled. It's about the man being willing to deliver it. Not only being willing to deliver it, but he becomes the real Rex that he wants to be. Well, what did we say kept him from being Rex? He had to marry the pregnant girl, so he didn't get to have the time of going out and having all the women swooning over his sexual, sexual prowess. Yeah. So now he gets to be Rex. Mm -hmm. And when he comes for that reason... Because he's specifically being used to... Propagate, right? Yeah, but he doesn't realize that at first. Not it's only at first. once, only as she tells him things. Mm -hmm. So that one, those lines at the end are not a yan, yan, yan. What's happening there is the shared recognition of that I'm going to get you pregnant business. You'll be fulfilled. You'll have your baby. Mm -hmm. So they come together as two people on a shared mission. Right. He's getting his need filled to be to Rex, be Rex. to be the king. Look how good it is to be the king if you want to be king of the sexual realm. Not only to have a woman who wants to, but uh, to have a woman who wants you to impregnate. Desire, yeah. You have to want your gene yes. genetics, your yeah. genes. That is the best Rex he'll ever be. Mm -hmm. So now look, a woman who goes out of the room to feed the dog and comes back and her blouse is unbuttoned one more button. Why? Because up to that point, he's not biting. She spent a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of decision-making and a lot of going back and forth. Will I really actually do this? She'll have faced that moment of, oh, my God, it's a different thing to actually start to do it. Right, because she goes into all that hemming and hawing. Do you want this sandwich? Do you want that meal? Do you want this meal? How about a tuna fish? <laughs> but, I mean, not even in the play. I mean, before she actually even decides to go and tell him, tell him to call Well, the him. first tip-off is that she places the record there, isn't it? The first tip-off to all of it is that she has to get him into a mood to do what she needs, mm -hmm. which is what the record. Right. And you've heard words, the record. You're looking at this and you're like, okay, why is this record playing? Yeah. Nobody's in the room and this record is going. And then she comes in and, oh, you know, I hope it's not too loud you know, for you. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, every time she unbuttons her thing, it's not coquettish. It's not, ooh, 
I wouldn't have a little sex. And so I'm going to show him more and more. It's, Jesus, this isn't working. <laughs> after all the things that she has done, after all the steps that we've talked about, a person would have to have gone through. She's been counting her days since her last period. She knows she must be ovulating by now because she's not doing this so that Rex will come, you know, every day at lunch date till he finally gets her pregnant over two weeks. She doesn't want to have a relationship with Rex. So she starts off. Why does she offer him a drink? All of the things that she does is because she's afraid she's not going to get him to want to do what she wants and to realize what he's doing. She wouldn't have to have. In other words, she wouldn't tell him at the beginning. She opens the one button down and says, you know, I don't have any children. I wish somebody else would impregnate. No. What the f*** are you talking about? Because to tell somebody, would you like to f*** my wife? Well, anybody might want to. But to tell them, look, uh, would you like to f*** my wife because we want a child? Well, that person now who's going to be the donor, so donor, to speak, yeah. that puts him in a whole different realm. Mm-hmm. He has actual legal responsibilities in relation to his offspring. There's a whole, you know, wait, whoa, colonial housewife is one thing, but to father a child through her so as to f*** over her husband, that's a whole different story. So she's not going to tell him that at first. No. So each yeah, time she unbuttons it, each time she's trying to offer him something, mm-hmm. that's because she thinks it's not working. He's not... He's not acting fast enough on it. Yeah. She's panicking. Right. Well, she's not panicking. Not, not in that sense, but yeah. But when you try to do something... And it doesn't work, then you try to do it a little more. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why men are so unbearable to women when they try to seduce somebody who doesn't want to be seduced. No matter how well your opening line is developed. If she doesn't want to, you're not going to say it in a better way to change your You're not going to change your mind for that. You know, nobody's sitting there and wants their mind changed. If she's looking for somebody, she might not like you at first and then might grow to like you. That's different. And she'll behave differently. But this whole sense of people thinking I'm going to talk somebody into anything that they don't want to do is asinine. So she doesn't try to talk him into it. She tries to seduce him into it. So that's why she keeps on buttoning. That's why she why she offers him a drink. Because alcohol is a suppressant of the superego. The superego is the conscience, the things I shouldn't do. Now, what have we done up to this point? Analyze the play. You always analyze a play in relation to how do human beings behave, not what kinds of things do characters do in a play. Huh. Because the kinds of things that people think characters can do in a play, characters cannot do. Because it's not what people do. It's not what people do. Because then we're thinking of characters in terms of non-human. Right. Now, don't forget, we are very lucky to be directors to come from a background of acting, which says, you don't do stuff on stage for a result. The result is what the play tells you to do. Then you're thinking about it in terms of plot. You're not thinking about it in terms of real people. Hmm. There's a George Bernard Shaw saying that says, the end result of everything on the stage is to make it look like real things are happening to real people. That is the import of Lee Strasberg's acting work. His quote on the same thing is, Don't forget, we're supposed to make actors look like people, not the other way around. So coming from that background, when you go into directing, you now should know that plays have to be read in terms of people's behavior, real people's behavior. We're not trying to make a play. We're trying to eradicate a play. But we're trying to, in its place, show a presentment, if that's the right word, of life. Mm -hmm. These are real people doing real things. And that means we have to do them in relation to the way that people behave. Now, the value in that is that that's what moves an audience. Because they are real people. They don't know what it is to play an audience. They don't know what it is to play an audience? Yeah. Meaning... They just come and sit and watch. They don't do anything. They come in and sit and say, okay, what you got? Yeah, what you got? And they just respond as they would respond. Yeah. And most of the time, unfortunately, in the theater, in my lifetime, they respond like this. Yeah, what's next? Yeah, I get what I'm supposed to feel. Yeah, okay, uh-huh. I understand the plot. Even when they think they are you know, good theater goers, they're not moved. But when you have real people doing real things, they get pulled in. Because the author has created somebody in whom you should have sympathy. That's the author's job. Who we watch in a play is someone in whom we have sympathy. 
And as I've told you before, everybody else in the play is only in the play in relation to that person with whom we're supposed to have sympathy. In um, Birdbath, it's not about the guy. It's about the girl who killed her mother. Even though you kind of see it through his eyes, right? It's through his eyes. Yes. But it's about her. It's about her. She's the one we're to, to feel the empathy for. Yeah. And you have an appreciation for him appreciating her. Because he brings her home, he wants to fuck somebody. But instead, her circumstance transmutes its behavior. So you have an appreciation for him. But she's the central character, really. Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? The central character is really Martha. But you can say it's really the relationship of the two. Yeah. So here, the central character is really who? Uh, the central character, I'm going to go with Avis. Yeah, of course. She's the one who initiates all the action. It is to fulfill her that the play is actually happening. And again, as I said before, what's going to happen in those circumstances if you are Rex, you're referred to that lunchtime job because the boss knows you would like to make extra money, and he thinks you're good at what you do, so he will refer you. You can't refer people if you don't believe in them because it flex back on you yeah. like you're an idiot. So when he comes to anybody's house, he cannot put on the line the confidence that his boss has in sending him out on these things where he can make extra money and hope to be a better Rex by coming on to a woman who doesn't want to be come on to. That's why he's very careful, although she's giving out all the signs, because he wouldn't want this to happen. He wouldn't want her to have buyer's remorse and then call up the boss and say, he made all kinds of advances to me. Buyer's remorse in terms of the work he does on the furniture? No. Or the sexual? Yeah. In other words, some it's possible for a woman to feel, for various psychological reasons, that she wants to have sex with somebody, and then afterwards she's guilty about it and things like that, and then she calls up and... What if she claims rape? Yeah. What if she, you know, exactly. anything could happen. Yeah. Right. So, so that's why he's very careful. Because his referral is from his boss. Yeah. Right. That's why he's very careful. In which, in which ways does he show his caution? He doesn't jump to the bait. She does one thing, he sees it, it makes no difference. He talks about the furniture and whatever else they're talking about. It takes a long time. That play is what? I don't know how what the playing time would be. Mm -hmm. But 30, 40 minutes, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, he only really says yes at the very end. Mm -hmm. His assent to do it is his last line. When he says, we're really going to fuck yes. up George, aren't we? We could really fuck up George. Mm -hmm. that's, that's as if he's saying, okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Now, if you get it the other way, when we first started talking, the things you were talking about, played on that level. It's inconsequential. It's a little sexy play. There's nothing in it. People don't know what the f I watch this for. Mm -hmm. Except everybody likes to watch things where they're sexy. Because everybody likes sex. But I mean, you know, it's 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 a little titillation. Mm -hmm. But if you see the play played, for how do human beings behave, there's a lot at stake here. Mm -hmm. This is a very significant play. It's not a one act that somebody does for lunchtime theater called Lunchtime. Mm -hmm. And it would be a full-length play if the situation sustained it. Meaning? They don't know each other. And it can happen in one act. So it does. They're not going to have a future. They're not going to get married. Gonna... What is the full significance of the title, Lunchtime? What we talked about at the beginning. That it's something I, that you do this where, where it's your own time. do what we want. And what she wants is a baby, so that's what she's going to do. And what he wants is to be Rex. And at first, to help him be Rex, it's just the money. That's all he knows. But as the thing progresses, yeah, I could be Rex. I could, I could have these my sexual escapades right. and when that I did his, not have yes. in my youth. Right. And then at the end, when he finds out what she really wants is to have a child by him since her husband won't do it, then... That's why I say it. it's only at the end that he says, flying high now. Flying high meaning... Now, the director's job would be to pinpoint... Well, first of all, the director's job is to recognize what the things are we've been talking about. Yes. Once you've done that, now you have to go back line by line right. and say, how does this line figure in the reality we were just talked about? Right. Not the reality. Because on face value, it's a little spiffy scene where people end up... Right. In light of... Of that, you would have to find out where Rex gets it, what she's after. Yes. He knows that she wants to do it from the beginning. He knows that she wants to have sex. Yeah. But he knows he, from the beginning. But he, it's through the course of the play. But he's going to be careful. 
it's through the course of the play that he comes to realize that she wants to have a baby. Why? Yes. So you would have to pinpoint, of course, where he where that realization hits. Right. Him. Not only that, you have to pinpoint in every line how does this line figure into that right. reality? Right. Why does she do that in relation to the things? Like I said, everybody who plays this without really knowing the play the way we've talked about it will have the girl come out and she comes out and now I'm a little sexier. And now I'm a little sexier. That's not what it is. That she does the first thing that Stacey notices. And so just like with those stage directions, lines have to be exactly done. Mm -hmm. So by the time she's off and does the third button, she's saying, what's it going to take? When you said just like those stage directions, which stage directions were you talking about? Generally stage directions? Just, no, or the three oh, the buttons. Button to do, undo the buttons, yeah. By the way, stage directions generally will be the same thing. In this play, you have to see why he does, why the author says do this. Mm -hmm. Now, what we need to do, and since it's only one act, we can do this. I'd like to go through it line by line. Right. Just to add a question here, as I'm noticing, this says merrily. Are those the kind of things you should cross out because they're telling you how to feel? No, no. It's not that you should cross them out. What it means is the author is trying to give you the sense of something by what he wrote that they say, but he feels it doesn't quite do that. So he then says merrily to show you the tone that it's supposed to be in, sarcastically, is snidely, it? any of those things. If he wrote the line better, he wouldn't have to tell you that. The words would tell you that. But believe me, in my own screenwriting, I see this. And I read somebody who, screenwriting teacher and so forth, who says, you should try to get rid of all those parentheticals. She smiles and all that business. Because the director's going to throw them away anyway because he doesn't want the actress playing that smile. do it mechanically. Only mechanically. When you go with the actress... And you say, what does that line mean? She tells you essentially, you say, well, why does it say merrily? She's got to know what the author meant. But what it actually is, it means he's, he's pointing your attention to something that you have to pay attention to. You have to understand what it means. Even she tiptoes by him. Why tiptoes? You'd have to look at why tiptoe. What's yeah. the value of that? Well, what is tiptoe doing? Well, it's... She's not uh, illustrating. She used to be a dancer. No. It's delicate. Yes. Yeah. It means the movement there, she's... Like, Cautious. Yeah. Yes, you know, you know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Now, merrily, in parentheses, is usually referring to the line before, not the line after, right? Mm, I'm not sure. It depends it on... It depends? Yeah. Let me see. I, let me because look just, I'm just line. curious there, because the merrily is in between, in parentheses, in between two lines. I would think no. I would think there it means the line before with the exclamation point. Engineer, he's an engineer. Uh, well, merrily there. Look, she says, "But darling, George is an engineer. He knows every step of the way. George is methodical. George is meticulous." That means what? If I tell him, sounds like I'm just telling you what George is like, right? Yes. She's not doing that. She's making fun of George. The lines don't make fun. It's the tone that makes fun. But darling, George is an engineer. He's very methodical. I see. Well, so there, it, it, it really could be both lines, because it's the before and the after, really. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's really the whole... Right. Again. Okay. Try not to think of it as lines. Yes. This is what somebody's saying. Right. The situation is making them say it. Yes. She's playing. Yeah, she's he's not, tipping you off that she's at play when yeah, she says that she's mocking. Play. It's mocking. Yeah, play. yeah, she's mocking. Oh, but George, he would never make. I mean, he say could have written George. there. He could have written mocking. Yes, and but is that it, that also is very heavy-handed, right? How she has responded to everything else up to this point will tell her how she says this line. What it is not, it is not information about George. Right. It is not a description about George. Right. It is her attitude that George is never going to make a mistake. Right. He's, he's methodical. Right. He's an engineer. Yes. I mean, they're really plotting against him there, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, of course. It? So when you say, no, you don't cross them out, what does merrily mean? There are a lot of, tell one actress to do that, merrily, 
What will she do? She'll skip like a little girl. Yeah. Around the room. Right. So in other words, you, you don't have to cross it up, but at the same token, you don't want them playing that you have to go over the dramatic meaning. That's what you want. Yeah. And that's what you don't want doing. their idea merrily. Right. You want the dramatic no, meaning. Exactly. Yeah. Merrily can help you if you don't understand the line by saying, what the hell is he saying? What does he mean for? by here? Yeah. Yeah. But most of the time, if you're doing your work and certainly by the end of the play, you would know because you know what everything is led up to there. And you know that something that is not a non sequitur is what the line is. Right. It's not something that now comes out of left field. But it has it, to do with the moment before. Look, Penter says a full minute. Silent. A full minute, please. I'll see what it's like. I'll see to the degree to which she is responding. I'll see to the degree to which the other guy is prompted now to say something else. Okay. And it just lets me know that there should be a profound silence. Right. Okay, so you'll the look at... The length of time of the silence could be five minutes and totally unprofound. I have to decode what the author means, what he's trying to achieve by saying merrily, right. by saying a full minute, please, of silence. What is he getting at? Right. It's got to be something that shows the audience the last moment was profound enough that both people have some time that they've got to digest what was just said before anything else can be said. I don't care if Pinter writes it. I don't care if Shakespeare writes it. I don't care who writes it. When I read the play, I'm saying, I know what's happening here to the point where when I see Merrily, I'll say, well, I know that. Right, right. But what the author is always trying to do, and I can guarantee you, is he doesn't want the line read straightforwardly. Right. Let me tell you about George. He's Tip methodical. He's, it's not information. She's, she's doing something now, which by making fun of him, gives her all the more permission to have the other guy father the child. The more she cuts him down in her own psyche, the more she is not guilty. He deserves it. Right. A director has to be able to look at life and know how people behave and then recognize that behavior which has been encrypted into a play and decrypt that. So that's what script analysis really is.